This work is part of a, a group of work which were made in uh, 2007 when I was listening to radio discussions and reading footage about the death of Cameron Mulrunji Dumaji in on Palm Island and I was also at that stage I'd lost my grandmother who was very close to me. My grandmother's name is uh, Grace Isaacson, she was known as Grace Camp and the two sort of events compounded. Um, I was working in a studio space where I was scrubbing pigment into the canvas. In this case, um, Prussian blue and ultramarine pigments and things like that as a sort of a, a grieving. And I was thinking about Palm Island. I first, well, the only time I visited there was uh, about 1984. I remember walking around the edges of Palm Island and there were lots of stingrays. And they were just, they, I don't know if they were mating season or what, but it was low tide and they were pushing against our legs as we we're walking along the coast and among the sand flats and so those two images are compounded here and this is the map of um, the main uh, uh, big island of the Palm Island group and so it sort of shows you that map it also shows you what I call sort of um, almost like a memory veil with the two blues indicating what I call um, the colour of memory, blue being the colour of memory washing over me. And the colours pulsating down also echo the look of beautiful water within the, the Pacific Ocean where the Palm Island group is and where Palm Island is. And it's seen to be such a beautiful place. It is, it, it is a tropical paradise that belies its um, secret underbelly of um, violent histories. Most Aboriginal people in Queensland have a connection to Palm Island through their families, all three being told about it. And when my grandmother was very young, uh, she was on uh, Riversley Station where she was born in 1912. And later she was taken by her mother, uh, Mabel Daly, and they went running from Riversley Station in the middle of the night and they went to Thorntonia Station. From there she was put on a mail coach and sent to Moorstone Station. And at Moorstone Station, when she was five or six, she was starting to work, you know, as a domestic or, you know, sort of in the gardens. She said the very first thing that she did was ironing handkerchiefs. And she was threatened and told, um, I guess if she wasn't good or, you know, sort of, you know, spoke out or anything like that, she'd, she would be sent to an island. And she didn't know which island. And she just said, I was very scared. I didn't want to go away and, you know, not have people around me that I knew. And so it could have been Palm Island. Um, certainly um, our, my great auntie uh, Kathleen uh, was sent to Palm Island, or it could have been um, Mornington Island, which is where many of the people who were on Riversley Station and other places came from. So there's a real connection with Mornington there as well. Um, this island, as I said, has got a very violent history, but it's interesting in terms of the histories that have been written about it. Um, one of them is uh, Jeff Water's Gone for a Song, another is um, Palm Island Are Through a Distant Lens by Joanne Watson. But the one that most people tend to know about is Chloe Hooper's uh, The Tall Man. And I think that book, in a way, conveys what I am trying to do with some of these works here, is to talk about events but in a way that's very poetic, very beautiful, so that you're seduced into it, you're pulled into it like a dream, and then the stories start erupting and emerging, and you're immersed within it, you've swallowed them, you've consumed that poisonous history, which in a way we all have to live with, whether you're Aboriginal or non-Aboriginal. If you're living in Australia, this is part of our history. This is all Aboriginal land, and it all comes from beneath the earth. This was part of a group of works called A Complicated Fall. And A Complicated Fall was the terminology given for um, Mulrunji's death. How it could be termed a complicated fall, I can't understand and most people cannot understand because he had a liver, a spleen, you know, cleaved into, his ribs were broken. Um, people described his wounds uh, in a medical sense as if he'd been hit by a truck. So to have a, you know, a complicated fall going into the, um, where he was you know, sort of 
ultimately to sort of die um, is outrageous. Obviously, it was a savage beating. You know, that's, I think that's obvious to most people. So all of this in some ways um, is talking about what it's like to hear that, you know, for us as Aboriginal people, you know, having, having these events which are very real um, turned into something as delicate a phrase as a complicated fall when, you know, it's obvious that something else has gone on and that something is only one thing in um, one of many. It's like a constellation of memories that, you know, implode on the consciousness of Aboriginal people everywhere.